Reef Bum is sponsored by Bulk Reef Supply and Ecotech Marine. This is this magical ratio of 16 to 1 of nitrogen to phosphorus, and it's based on work with microalgae and bacteria. Um, so it's how translatable is it? I don't know. The other thing that people have to realize is that 16 to 1 is a molar ratio of nitrogen to phosphorus. It's You can't just plug in your nitrate value and your phosphate value and look to see if it's 16 to 1. You have to convert well, first you've got to, most test kits are measuring phosphate, so you have to convert that to phosphate phosphorus. So you have to get just the phosphorus component, and then you have to do the same with your nitrate. But the total, the N and the N equation of, is all the nitrogen. So it's your ammonia, it's your uh, nitrite, and it's your nitrate. And it's also uh, organic nitrogen. So you have all the, the organic nitrogen is something you can't measure. You can measure total nitrogen if you have the right kits and chemistry, and you basically will measure the inorganic nitrogen, which is the nitrate, nitrate, look, nitrate, nitrate, and uh, uh, ammonia, nitrite. So those three, and and then you do the math and you figure out roughly what your organic nitrogen level is. But once you've got the nitrate, nitrogen, phosphate, phosphorus numbers, it's still in milligrams per liter. So now you have to convert it to molar. So there's actually a MASIC ratio for, what by MASIC I mean, the, if you're doing milligrams per liter, and I believe it's, I think it's 23 to one or 43 to one of nitrogen to phosphorus. So it's different than the 16 to one, because as I started by saying, the 16 to one is a molar ratio. So that's one, the first thing you need to realize about that ratio. The second thing is that I uh, have a good friend of mine, Max Janssen, who's the curator at the uh, Burgers Ocean in Arnhem in the Netherlands, who has, fantastic 180,000 gallon live reef tank that's been running for over almost 20 years now. And it's filled with huge colonies of corals. And he's he has a paper out where he talks about the, he went to the literature and got values of different reefs. And I took those numbers for nitrogen and phosphorus and I ran it through the, the, the conversions to molar. And most of them are not 16 to one. They're like three to one or two to one. Then there's others like off of Florida and the Bahamas that are 20 to 1 or 30 to 1. So there's this huge variation in natural reefs. So how useful is this ratio really? And I know Max tries to, to maintain that 16 to 1 ratio uh, as a matter of course. And that, that falls into the whole, okay, I need to add some more nitrogen because my now my, my corals are, are nitrogen limited because I have enough phosphate, but now I don't have enough nitrogen. Or the opposite, I've got lots of nitrogen, but I don't have enough phosphorus, so I need to add a little bit more phosphorus or just feed your fish for. But what the big difference between his tank and our tank is the fish population. He has much fewer fish than we do. We mm. just finished our census, and we've, we've been as high as 1,300 fish, but uh, <clears throat> currently we have 727 fish in there in 212,000 gallons, and I would say he has maybe uh, less than half that. Wow. Uh, so, Julian, your thoughts in terms of that uh, that ratio? How how uh, how important is that if um, you know you're you're trying to uh, combat an algae issue? Um, neither when I wrote the book, nor since <laughs> the book on algae, have I um, explored that as an angle for controlling algae. Um, it's an open area for research to see whether tweaking uh, those values will curb or enhance algae growth. I don't know the answer to that. So I've always focused, the levers, the buttons that I push um, are calcium and alkalinity, maintain those higher. Um, and again, I've never known why that was so. Uh, I just know that you know, uh, boosting alkalinity uh, curbs the growth of the two main problem types, the red cyano and the green hair algae. Um, and that 
because because corals are growing when the alkalinity falls, that's when you see the algae show up. Uh, the other is that um, it, focusing on phosphate to lower that has been very, very helpful, not just with uh, cyanobacteria and green hair, but also um, diatoms um, and, you know, even bryopsis uh, to an extent. Bryopsis is, <laughs> bryopsis is, you know, able to subsist at really, really low nutrient levels.